As an astronaut, Dr. Janice Voss is used to travel as she's logged over 18 million miles in space. A recent trip to Elgin for Dr. Voss was a special day for her, and she also ventured to the Gail Borden Public Library as part of their Space Dare to Dream exhibit. The library's Denise Raleigh conducted a special interview with Dr. Voss, which we'll hear in just a moment. But first, Denise tells us some behind-the-scenes stories of Dr. Voss and her visit. She came into the library on a Sunday night after we were closed to go through the exhibit to make sure she knew everything that was here before she appeared on Spike Odell on WGN and on WBEZ and that was part of this 848, it's a Steve Edwards show. So she was really uh, enthused to be here and the people in this community were enthused that she came. We had over 350 people here for her July 10th presentation. It was the first time we've ever uh, done a live web streaming and I think we had about 1,800 hits that night. So we were very pleased with, with the response to that too and we got very uh, good comments. You can still access her video uh, via our website, which is www.gailborden.info. I'd like you to share, only because I've truly enjoyed this story, of what got you interested in science and space exploration. My first interest in that came from reading the book A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lengo. I was on vacation with my family in Indiana and we stopped by the public library to check out books I'd been reading since I was preschool. And I happened to pick this book up. I was so fascinated by it that when I got back from vacation I checked out the entire science fiction section of, that, of the library back in my hometown. I've been reading science fiction ever since. Still do. Seeing that you're such a reader of books and you've been to libraries many, many times, we're doing a little bit something different here at the Gail Warden Public Library as you can see from our space exhibit. What do you think of this? I think that's a great way to continue to have libraries be a focus for public interest and a resource for all kinds of things. It's not just about reading. Reading is really a way to get information. And this is another way to transmit information that really inspires people to think of information as fun. And I think that's really great. What advice do you have for young pe people about daring to dream? I pass on the same advice that I got from Rusty Swikart. I went to hear a talk he was giving and he got asked this question. And his answer, I thought, was marvelous and it worked for me. And the best thing about it is it works for any profession you might want. What he said was it's very difficult to predict what someone's going to want 5 or 10 or 15 years from now in whatever profession you choose. Librarian, teacher, home wife, uh, housewife, anything. But the one thing you can be sure of is they're looking for, pe for people who are really good and really excited. So if you try to be really honest with yourself and pursue things that are both fun for you and where you have skills, You'll be good at what you do, you'll love it, the enthusiasm will make it fun and not a job, and you'll end up with a career wherever it takes you that is fun and you're good at, which is what everybody's really trying to achieve anyway. Talk about gravity and what it felt like when you were, didn't have gravity in space. We train on the ground with underwater to get adjusted to it. Being deep under the water in scuba is kind of like being in zero gravity, but when you get up in orbit, you get a chance to really play with it. and. In the early days, before we had launched people, the first astronauts, as you may know, were all test pilots because they didn't know. They, with, without gravity to move fluids around, they sent dogs up first because they thought maybe you couldn't breathe. Maybe your lungs would fill with water. How would your stomach work? How are you going to get food through? Turns out, space is easy. Your body loves space. It's more like, oh man, you're going to send me back to one gravity? <laughs> Leave me here. So it's really a lovely environment. You do have to adapt. There's, everything is different. You use, end up using your toes a lot more instead of your arms, because your arms are busy doing things, your toes control things, and you can't just stand still on your feet. The, when I, the first thing that got sore on, when I got up on it was the arches of the top of my feet, because you, you tend, your habits from 1G is to curl your toes up to, to stop you someplace, right? You kind of stick your, your foot under something and curl your toes up, and you quickly learn that this is not gonna work. You get better at positioning yourself. So you have some adaptation to do, but it's really quite easy. Dr. Voss, what are you reading right now? I always carry a book in my purse, so if I have any odd moments at the line of the grocery store or whatever, I have something to read. And this is what I happen to be reading at the moment. It's a science fiction book, David Weber, Crown of Slaves, uh, also jointly written with Eric Flint. It's about a group of people who are committed to, to eliminating slavery in that part of their galaxy. You're, you are a, a great lover of science fiction. Tell us about some of the books you've read and where you read them. Well, science fiction has been such an important motivator for me. On my first flight, I, 
everybody is allowed to bring two items on every flight. On my first flight, I took my favorite science fiction story, which is Isaac Asimov's Foundation, as one of my two items. We ended up having two extra 